Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and in today's video, I thought it would be a good idea for me to share with you some of the technologies that I'm interested in learning within 2024 and the reasoning behind it. With 2023 just wrapping up, the technology landscape has shifted completely from where it started with new technologies in, uh, in AI to IoT to cybersecurity to the cloud. There's a lot of interesting things happening and with that I, I wanted to focus my attention a bit uh, into uh, specific topics that I would like to pursue within this year and actually upskill myself in. So let's get started within, the, uh, within this video and, and please leave a comment in the uh, comments down below if you agree with my selection, if you're planning to learn anything else and let's have a conversation going. So first of all we're going to be starting with the machine learning specialization uh, on Coursera. And with uh, the big rise in ChatGPT over the last year, I have been experimenting a bit with the machine learning models and basically with a lot of different technologies that actually utilize machine learning. And one of these technologies were ML.NET. ML.NET is basically an open source cross-platform machine learning platform, which is provided by Microsoft. You can utilize C-sharp and F-sharp in order for us to create uh, machine learning directly into our application. And basically we can utilize custom ML models made easy directly in order for us to build our own custom models for us to utilize within our application. And we can see here that within a few lines of code, we can actually create a full uh, machine learning model that we can actually utilize. And then based on that, we can actually utilize it directly inside our application. So while I was using this and actually exploring this, that left me more to want to understand some of the main ideas behind this and some of the theory uh, that comes from this practice itself. And within ML.NET, we can see here that the C-sharp is a layer of abstraction on top of these models that actually allows us to create uh, for someone like me who did not have any experience when, with machine learning to directly create applications who utilize machine learning, uh, specifically if you want to create in any of these topics like sentiment analysis, object detection, price detection, uh, forecasting, image classification, etc. etc. For this reason, I wanted to understand the main concepts behind it and the theory. And this is where I landed on this course, Machine Learning Specialization with Dr. Andrew Ng. And this course is going to be a quite simple course, not a simple course, but basically a uh, specialization course with three sections where it actually delve into these different types of machine learning uh, that's going to allow me to understand more about actually AI and machine learning in order for me to move progress further within uh, the future. So that's one, that's the main reason I decided to go with this course and this is the main thought process behind it because I feel machine uh, AI and machine learning only going to get better and better the more this is going to be the worst the worst uh, they'll ever be in history they're only going to get better and more smarter and more capable so it's always good for us to learn and understand how do they work in order for us to always be uh, adding value to it and actually be able to utilize them to their maximum potential down the road so this is the course that I'm going to be following as well there's other courses that I'm going to be keep looking at uh, I'll make sure to keep uh, this updated uh, the more that I figure out stuff but this is going to be the main stepping stone for me when it comes to actually machine learning as well as uh, AI. As well, uh, if you're interested in me making videos about ML.NET, please let me know and I'll make sure to cover at least some series about how you can actually build machine learning application within your .NET application and we can see how we can integrate them with our, our APIs and we can actually build stuff around that. And this is all uh, provided for free by Microsoft, so it's a really good tool. So the other thing is that I really want to learn within this upcoming year is I want to focus my uh, cybersecurity skills. And cybersecurity is something that we're always trying to do better because the more secure your application, the more users are going to have trust in your application and it's going to get better and better from there. And over the last 15 years of my experience, uh, cybersecurity has always been on my mind. I have always tried to upskill myself as much as possible while I'm doing my um, while I was working, but uh, this year I decided to take a bit more seriously to actually try to get a bit a bit certified in cybersecurity. As we know, there is a lot of security incidents that happened over the last years, which basically made a lot of people's record got leaked online and a lot of uh, people's uh, information has been stolen, etc, etc. So this is just for me to actually try to upskill my, up myself when it comes to cybersecurity, figure out the best practices, how I can protect the application that I work on or the technologies that I work on, as well how I can actually contribute back to the society in order for us to protect ourselves from any cybersecurity incident. So there is this course by Google, Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. It takes someone from the beginner level all the way 
up to a certain level of expertise. So I'm still looking at this. There's another one uh, as well on uh, a cloud guru, but uh, I'm still not have decided yet, but this is going to be something that I'm definitely going to be looking on. Um, so far, I'm leaning more towards to this, but yeah, uh, I'll leave the links uh, all of all of this in the description down below so you can explore it for yourself. So this is going to be the next topic, which is going to be cybersecurity. So the main part that I'm going to be trying to focus on is going to be uh, web application or applications in general, how we can protect there and maybe IoT because that's something I'm really interested in as well. But uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be the main thing. So within this course, if you go to the courses, we can see they start with the foundation of cybersecurity. Uh, they basically uh, gives us a bit of uh, concepts of how we can protect our networks and network security. There's a lot of when it comes to Linux and SQL and how we can actually protect ourselves uh, there. Uh, asset threats and vulnerability, how we can assess vulnerabilities, uh, how we can actually see if there's threats on our system, what are the warnings that we can actually take and actually see in order for us to start uh, looking or basically think there might be some kind of a security incident so we can actually protect ourselves against it. And there is also some automated cybersecurity tasks with Python. So all of these seems very interesting. There is a YouTube channel that I would like to recommend. So this is, there is this YouTube channel, it's called Network Chuck. It's an amazing uh, YouTube channel. Uh, hi, if you haven't heard of it before, I highly recommend you checking it out where Chuck basically goes into all of the different topics when it comes to cybersecurity, how we can actually protect ourselves, topics when it comes to security, from bash scripting to protecting yourself against hacker, uh, ethical hacking, etc, etc. So there's a lot of different uh, topics that currently exist, which I highly recommend that you actually go through and watch. So this is going to be the next topic, which is going to be cybersecurity, as we said. The third topic that I'm actually learning on uh, or basically upskill myself on is Apache Kafka. And Apache Kafka is basically an open source library which allows us to, to have a op distributed event streaming application. So if you have a lot of distributed applications, uh, utilizing Apache Kafka, what we can do is we can allow these different applications to communicate with each other and basically have the capabilities of uh, send information to each other and have a network of um, communication that's happening completely of, uh, completely asynchronously rather than having it a synchronous communication. I already have some experience with Apache Kafka, but I feel like my level of experience only can uh, needs to get better. Uh, I need to enhance my experience there. So uh, that's why it's going to be one of the main uh, technologies specifically that I want to actually learn and actually enhance myself because basically everything right now that we do is going to be running on the cloud. And the more that we actually understand how we can make our application more reliable and more scalable, it's only going to get better and better. So that's why I really want to focus on Apache Kafka and actually and learn it more in the proper way. So after Apache Kafka, there is two stuff uh, from a technique, from a career point of view that I want to actually uh, learn. Or basically enhance myself. The first one is going to be .NET Aspire. I already made some videos about .NET Aspire. I already like uh, talked about how great it is. And uh, I want us to know just it's still in a preview state. So it's only going to get better the more they, uh, they release it. I can't wait until GA is available so we can see what are the capabilities that currently exist there. If you are someone who are interested in building a cloud native applications uh, and you want to actually have a directly jump start, I highly look, uh, recommend uh, looking into .NET Aspire. It actually takes or uh, a lot of the complexity out of it and provide you with a lot of uh, amazing features out of the box. It's still in its infancy, as I said, it's still in preview, but it's going to be something to really watch on within this upcoming year. And lastly, as a, it's going to be Azure DevOps. I have already uh, created a lot of videos on Azure DevOps, but I feel like DevOps is going to is such an evolving world, uh, and I want to keep. Uh, my technology sharp in DevOps. So that's why I would like to still experiment and learn more about Azure DevOps within this upcoming year. So these were the main items from a, I would say a career point of view that I want to focus on. Uh, with that, uh, there's stuff from a more of a personal interest and hobby point of view that I want to um, focus on. And the first thing is going to be a AR and VR. AR and VR is take a big boom this year uh, based on the release of Apple Vision Pro. As we know, a lot of different companies already really uh, have 
VR headsets like Meta and their Meta Quest, and they have a lot of cool stuff available there. But uh, I feel always when Apple takes the jump into something, everyone else is follow. So although this is gonna be a first gen product, but uh, as we can see here from the illustration, it's gonna basically uh, change the way we actually do things. So here we can see that. Uh, uh, this person is actually reading on a big uh, screen and uh, browsing the web there but this is what I'm interested more in where actually people are doing their full development work and actually doing the full work directly through their VR so imagine having this full screen in front of you where you're actually working creating your application there it's still, as, we, as I said, for a jump product, it's gonna shift completely within the future. So that's why I'm really interested in learning about AR and VR from now, because when the second second version of this comes, and the third one where we don't really need this cable going down on the VR being this big, it's gonna be a get more mainstream. It's always to be good ahead of the curve. And this is why I wanna really polish my skills when it comes to AR and VR and trying to learn all about it. There is an AR kit, a VR kit that, um, Apple has released for the Apple Vision Pro. So I already started dabbling with it a bit, but this is something that I'm actually trying to learn more and more about it. And the last one, is gonna be IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, I have already have some Raspberry Pis that I'm actually trying to work with, but basically within Internet IoT, 90% of the stuff that uh, we interact with are uh, connected to the internet. And that's why it's an interest of mine to see how we can actually automate a lot of the stuff uh, that we do on a daily basis so we can have more stuff for the important stuff. Uh, so we can have more time for the important stuff. And this is where internet IoT or internet of things comes into place. Uh, we can actually develop internet uh, IoT <laughs> with .NET, which is crazy, but uh, it's very exciting as well. So we can build stuff within C Sharp. And this is why I'm really interested in uh, learning this and see how we can actually progress further. Uh, I haven't really created any uh, any videos regarding IoT or Raspberry Pis, but if you're interested, maybe I can create something. It's not something I'm planning to do anytime soon, but in case there are, and I see there's a lot of demand for it, it will be something that I might consider to creating down the line. So in essence, these are the main topics that I'm actually trying to learn within this upcoming year. Uh, if you're actually learn, trying to learn something or you want to learn something, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you already started learning something or you're interested in uh, exploring a new technology post, please also let me know if you have any questions as well. Please feel free to uh, ask me. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, again, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel and have a great day.